That recipe, by the way, is in this book. Meals Made Simple, the second book. Let's see, I won't be able to flip right to it, but I'll show you some other Whole30 compliant stuff while we're at it. Oh, there it is. Shortcut spaghetti with meat sauce. I have the best recipe in my fridge, but it is my great grandma's recipe and it requires four hours of simmering, which I don't ever have time for pretty much. So we do this one a lot. Also, I'm sick if you can't tell in my voice. So I would say if you're doing a Whole30 and you need more recipes um, outside of the Whole30 cookbooks, this book is probably your best bet. It doesn't use a lot of sweeteners and things like that. Um, so almost everything in the book that's savory is Whole30 approved. So you've got a Southwestern frittata, this autumn breakfast skillet so long as, no actually it has homemade sausage so you're good there. Um, I don't know about these, they might be a gray line area but I think they're great. <laughs> The wraps are just coconut flour and eggs and arrowroot, and they're filled with a ton of veggies and eggs, so um, you'd probably be okay, but obviously up to you. Skip the biscuits. <laughs> this quiche with bacon and zucchini and chard and hollandaise, yes, totally okay. Skip the nut-free granola, eat that next month. This overnight breakfast casserole is made in the slow cooker. It's totally fine and compliant and is an awesome thing to have on hand, especially if you have um, company. Just make sure you get a Whole30 compliant sausage or make your own. Skip the pumpkin bread, <laughs> skip the waffles, we'll skip the pancakes. The sheared eggs are good, those are okay. Everything in that ingredient list is compliant. That's ham down there, so just make sure you use, or actually prosciutto um, is usually fine. So just check the ingredients. Skip the blueberry muffins. All of these simple scrambles are compliant. Um, oh, and then there's some smoothies, which I drink smoothies on my Whole30 when I'm pregnant, um, and all of these are also compliant. P.S. I know you're not supposed to fill cravings, but when you're pregnant and doing a Whole30, it's almost impossible. And this banana choco malt one does the trick if you just need something sweet. It uses dates, so it's compliant ingredients. Might be a gray line, but it's awesome. <laughs> Okay, all the soups are fine. Italian wedding soup, minestrone soup, roasted chicken and vegetable soup, amazing. Mexican chicken soup, done in a crock pot. Actually, a lot of these are done in a crock pot and this white pork chili is so good. The only thing with this one is it uses leftover pork that was uh, marinated in maple syrup. So you just do a different pork or add chicken, rotisserie chicken or whatever you want. Um, any protein is fine. Um, and then just don't do the hard cider. Um, just use a little bit of apple cider, like um, not alcoholic, but unfiltered apple cider and a little bit more chicken stock and that'll be good. This roasted beet and bacon salad is awesome. It is compliant. The spa salad's compliant. The buffalo chicken salad is definitely compliant and is amazing. Crock pot as well. The Waldorf chicken salad is. Um, the ranch is homemade and all compliant ingredients. Super easy to make. Best dairy-free ranch you will ever taste. Uh, warm taco salad, compliant. <laughs> BLT salad, yes, just make sure you get a Whole30 bacon. Believe it or not, this barbecue chicken chop salad can be compliant. That is going on our menu for sure because I've been craving it like crazy. I have a Whole30 barbecue sauce on my blog, so I'll be subbing in that. This Greek salad with slow cooker garlic oregano lamb is compliant. The tuna salad's compliant. And then moving on to entrees. This should be on your maybe bi-monthly rotation. Peruvian style chicken with sweet potatoes scattered around it. So good, really easy, all done in one sheet pan. This roasted chickens with thyme gravy. That gravy is actually compliant. Don't be scared by roasting a whole chicken. It's actually super easy and then you can eat the leftovers of salads and all sorts of stuff and use the bones to make bone broth. Another sheet pan dinner, the garlic herb chicken thighs, Brussels sprouts, carrots, and you're there, that's compliant. Pesto stuffed prosciutto chicken, that's compliant too. The Hawaiian burgers are actually compliant. If you haven't had grilled pineapple on a burger, you're missing out. I'm telling you, grilled pineapple is one of my favorite things ever. I could eat it for dessert. Um, ginger chicken and broccoli, compliant. Serve it over some cauliflower rice. Again, another gray area, but all the ingredients are Whole30 compliant. That's up to you. California chicken wraps. There's avocado, my dairy-free ranch, bacon. Oh, you know what? The chicken's honey Dijon, so just leave that off and just do grilled chicken. 
slow cooker chicken tikka masala with a cauliflower vegetable biryani under there. That is compliant. This chicken curry is compliant. Another slow cooker recipe. So that barbecue chicken is the one that's in the salad. The barbecue dry rub does have some coconut um, sugar in it and the barbecue sauce does use sweeteners. So I would just do regular rotisserie or just you know grilled chicken and then use the barbecue sauce from my blog instead. Chicken verde. Um, the lemon oregano chicken kebab is also good. This chicken and rice casserole, so good. Totally Whole30 compliant. You will think that you're eating a casserole with canned cream of mushroom soup and sour cream in it, I promise, because that's what my mom made growing up and that's what I tried to replicate. Okay, so these barbecue beef short ribs will be compliant as well, so long as you use that Whole30 barbecue sauce that I mentioned that's on my blog. Beef tacos, I keep the seasoning in my pantry at all times. It's one of our weekly rotation meals. So these meatloaf meatballs could totally be compliant. The sauce calls for honey, but again, if you just used either my Whole30 ketchup or my Whole30 barbecue sauce on my blog, or you bought a compliant one like from Tessie Mays or something like that, then you could totally have these as well. And that's um, roasted garlic mashed cauliflower underneath there, even though it looks like potatoes. Although Whole30 says whole or white potatoes are allowed. I can't eat them, so cauliflower and parsnips and turnips, it is free. Beef stroganoff. Compliant. Yes, it is, I promise. <laughs> no dairy. Enchilada stuffed peppers, compliant. Chipotle barbacoa is compliant. That's done in the slow cooker as well. This is also compliant. Just make sure that you get a compliant Italian sausage, which there's plenty. Ropa Vieja is um, compliant. You can serve it with plantains, which is super yummy. Slow cooker Thai beef. These um, pineapple beef cobs, also compliant. Mexican burgers, also compliant. And that side dish back there of smoky sweet potatoes, compliant and so good. I use them in the morning with eggs. One of my pregnancy cravings with every pregnancy is pizza. So this pepperoni pizza pasta, just find a compliant pepperoni, which I have seen a couple out there. Totally Whole30 compliant and will completely satisfy your pizza cravings what we're having tonight. Rosemary lemon pork chops, also compliant and super easy and super good. There's the braised lamb that's done in the slow cooker. Greek lamb burgers with uh, dairy-free tzatziki sauce. You can't have this maple Dijon pork tenderloin for the next 30 days, but you must make it afterwards because you'll love it. And there's crispy prosciutto and sweet pears and stuff in the salad and it's so delicious. Um, the pork stir fry is okay as long as you use a different pork. So a lot of the recipes in the book call for leftover meat, so you kind of convert old recipes into new ones. So this stir fry uses this maple Dijon pork tenderloin, so just grab another protein instead, um, either pork or chicken or steak or whatever you want. This slow cooker braised pork shoulder is also compliant, just leave out the wine. I'd add a little bit extra chicken stock to it. Um, and then you convert it the next night or whenever to this pork ragu, served over butternut squash noodles, super yummy, lots of flavor. Kids are bathed in bed and I'm back. A fish tacos with mango pineapple salsa. And then pesto pasta with scallops. Creamy dill salmon, one of my favorites. Crab and asparagus linguine. Compliant. Uh, just take out the white wine. Use extra chicken stock instead. The poached cod with butternut squash and carrot puree. Roasted tomato and shrimp pasta. This barbecue salmon with grilled peach salsa is if you just leave the coconut sugar out of the rub. And then all of these sides are as well. And then most of these basics are as well. So almond milk and chicken stock, taco seasonings, lots of different vinaigrettes, mayonnaise, pesto that's dairy free, that pineapple mango um, salsa, tomatillo salsa. So the only thing that you'd wanna do that's chicken stock. Um, this is the taco seasoning and then that barbecue dry rub, just leave out the um, 
coconut crystals, sorry. So we have a dairy-free ranch, champagne vinaigrette, a Greek vinaigrette, and then a balsamic. And those are all Whole30 compliant, so you can have lots of Whole30 condiments ready to go so you don't get stuck. Mayo, although I just buy Primal Kitchen foods most of the time now because it's so good. Um, again, go to the barbecue sauce and the ketchup on my blog instead of this one so that it uses dates and it's Whole30 compliant. Hollandaise using ghee. Dairy-free pesto that you could put on everything. We use it all the time just as a quick backup dinner with like spaghetti squash and chicken apple sausage, some veggies, some different sauces and guacs. And then just skip this chapter and come back to it when you're done with your Whole30. As Melissa Hartwood would say, life after Whole30. Oh, those Meyer lemon curd cakes are really good. Um, I shouldn't be looking at this, so I'm going to sign off. So that's all of the recipes that are Whole30 compliant in my second cookbook, Meals Made Simple. Um, I can walk you guys through my other two if you think it would be helpful. Um, I'm sure that you probably all know the ingredients by now, but I'm happy to do that tomorrow if you'd like it.